Sometimes your satellite dish might be aimed properly at a satellite, but you might only be getting a few of the channels on that satellite and you're missing a bunch. Well, it may have to do with the size of the dish you're using. Some channels just plain need a bigger satellite dish to receive them, and I'll explain why. And I hope by making this video I can help out some viewers who might be wondering sometimes why they can't lock a certain channel or receive a certain channel on a satellite even though their dish might be aimed correctly. So when a satellite dish signal comes down from space, what happens is, is that the signal comes in and bounces off of the dish pan and is focused into the LNB. That's this little blue and white thing right here. And that is like your antenna. And what that does is it takes the raw satellite signal, down converts it to a lower frequency and amplifies it and then sends it through the coax cable to your receiver where it is decoded by your receiver into TV channels. Now, as far as the dish size goes, it really depends on the size of the dish pan. The larger the dish pan, the more signal you're gonna collect. It's sort of like a TV antenna. If you're using a very small TV antenna, you're only gonna collect a little bit of signal and therefore the channels you get might not be as strong. Satellite signals work the same way. The more signal you can collect, the better off your reception is going to be. And the more signal you collect, the greater chance you have of receiving all of the channels that are available on a given satellite. One of the reasons that some channels on a given satellite are more difficult to receive has to do with something known as forward error correction or FEC. And FEC is a method that broadcasters use to try and check for and correct errors in their satellite broadcast signals. So what they do is send little extra bits of information along with the signal. And those extra bits of info are only used to correct errors in the transmission and make it easier to receive channels without any picture breakup. And FEC is normally shown as a fraction. So if you look beside the transponder information, beside the frequency, polarization, and symbol rate, you'll also notice a fraction like two-thirds, three-fourths, five-sixths, and so on. And channels that have a lower FEC, like two out of three or three, three out of four, those are generally easier to receive with a smaller dish because those channels have a wider margin of error. So they can be received easier because they're a lot more uh, robust, the signals, and that means that they can handle any interference easier than channels that have a higher FEC, like five out of six, seven, eight, or nine out of 10. Channels with a higher forward error correction rate tend to have less of those redundant bits of information sent along with them for error correction. So they have a much smaller margin of error, meaning that it's more finicky to pick those channels up because they're more susceptible to interference and picture breakup. And they also tend to have a higher carrier to noise ratio, which means that you need to collect more signal to overcome the noise floor in your system in order to receive those channels reliably. And what that really means is any channels with a higher FEC need a much bigger satellite dish in order for you to receive those channels reliably. I have some examples here now. We'll use satellite 103 West KU band as an example. And the reason I chose this satellite is because I get a lot of questions from viewers about receiving the NBC feeds along with Cozy TV on that satellite. There are some transponders on that satellite, like you can see on the screen here, that are pretty easy to receive with a smaller dish. So these two transponders here that have like NHK World from Japan, CGTN, Loop TV, Reach TV, NTA from Nigeria, and DW from Germany, these transponders have an FEC, you'll notice on the screen there, of three-fourths or three out of four. So because they have a lower forward error correction, they tend to be picked up easier with a smaller satellite dish. Now, the other channels on this satellite, the NBC feeds along with Cozy TV, those transponders have a higher forward error correction rate of 5 out of 6. So what that means is, is that there's less margin for error with these channels. That means that the signal needs to be received more accurately and with less errors in order for your receiver to decode these channels properly. 
And to make that happen, more signal has to be collected. And that's why you need a bigger satellite dish because it's going to bring in more signal and allow your receiver to decode those channels more accurately without any picture breakup or signal errors. So that's why you need a bigger dish to get these channels. So for example, I have three KU band satellite dishes right here. This white one is a 33 inch KU band dish. This is a 33 inch dish and this is a 39 inch dish. Now this one here I use for 87 West and that gets me all of the channels on 87 West pretty good, although it is a little on the smallish side. This one here is a motorized KU band dish and being that it's a 33 inch dish, I can get some of the channels on 103 West, for example, but I can't get the NBC channels with this dish because it's a bit small. So I use this dish as a stationary dish fixed on 103 West to get those NBC channels because they're sent at a higher forward error correction rate. And that means the dish needs to collect more signal in order for your receiver to decode those channels properly. So if you're having trouble getting a particular channel on a given satellite, have a look on Lingsat or TVROSAT at the transponder information for that channel and look specifically at that forward error correction rate. That might explain why you're having trouble picking up that channel. Now, another thing is if you are a feed hunter, if you like to look for satellite wild feeds, then having a bigger dish is gonna help you there as well. Because once again, you're gonna be able to collect more signal. You have a better chance of hauling in more channels every time you do a blind scan when you use a bigger dish. Another reason why a bigger satellite dish might be required is if you live on the fringe of a satellite's signal footprint, then because you're not really getting the strongest possible signal from that satellite, you'll need a bigger dish in order to collect enough signal to receive the channels on that satellite. Websites like Lingsat and TVROSAT have satellite signal footprint maps available that can help you to see where you live in relation to a satellite signal footprint. And they can also help you decide on an appropriate sized satellite dish so you can receive that signal. So as a general rule, a bigger satellite dish is always better. If you're just getting into the hobby and you're gonna buy a dish for the first time, I'd recommend getting a 39 inch dish like this one on the right here, because you're gonna be able to collect a lot more signal, pull in channels easier, and you're gonna have just a better overall experience uh, for the first time in the hobby. And if you live in Canada, you can find one of these Star Choice or Shaw satellite dishes these are a little on the smaller side. They're a 33 inch elliptical dish, but they work really well for receiving free satellite TV channels from a variety of satellites on the ARC. Most of these satellites have channels with lower forward error correction rates, and you can get channels on 87 West, 95 West, 97 West, 99 West, some of the channels on 103 West, 117 West, that has a bunch of free channels now. Along with 123 and 125 West, you can pick all those channels up with a Shaw or Star Choice satellite dish like this. And if you live in the US, then the equivalent satellite dish to this would be an Orbi satellite dish. Orbi was a satellite subscription service that closed down about a year ago. Their dishes also can receive free satellite TV channels exactly as they are and if you're looking for more information on free satellite tv check out my channel i've got lots of videos on there to help you get started in this great hobby